ever wondered what it's like to be up there? Well, today's guest is going to tell us how it feels. Sequence start. Engines on. So other than being an astronaut, tell me what would be your other accomplishment? It would have to be medicine. In fact, I've always said that if I had to give one thing up, it would not be medicine. It enabled me to help my mom live for a lot longer. It uh, helped me resuscitate my dad on one occasion and certainly helped a lot of my friends and family. So that's one thing that makes me feel that I can still contribute in a very worthwhile sense. Being an astronaut, was something that made me do something in a pioneering sense and it certainly fulfilled a dream and also was part of our world history and that is an incredible thing the medicine part however is something that I wouldn't give up and it's extremely it's extremely memorable for me in the training and the, the continued medical education that I do all the time so that I would say would be the answer I am a person that adores uh, sweets and your mother made you a cake and it's called dream cake that you took to space. And tell me about that cake. I've never heard of a cake named Dream Cake. Yeah, I see, I don't even know if it's, was, if it's supposed to be called that, but my mom called it that. And she told my sister, me, we were a little young, that if you eat this Dream Cake, that your dreams will come true. And it was wonderful, it was a shortbread base. Oh. And you had to like coconut and walnuts, because that was part of the middle part. And then she had on this wonderful frosting on the top. And what happened was that I wanted to take some of that into space with me, because my dream was to become a spaceman. And when my mother went down and said she wanted to make this, of course, everything's sterile down at NASA. You can't introduce bacteria in any of the food because you can't get, you don't, we don't want to get sick in space. I mean, that's not a pretty picture. So they gave my mom um, all the ingredients that were sterilized at the cake, <laughs> and they allowed her to do it in the condo unit. And so oh my surreptitiously, goodness. my mother's baking this cake, which then has to get, they, they go down with the white gloves, and they take this dream cake, and they take it over to crew quarters in the dietary part, and then they had to package it up. And then the second story that came out of that was that uh, one of the crew members on my flight had a birthday on while we were in space. And the diet people said that he had cake, that they put a birthday cake on board. Well, he went in and oh. he couldn't find it. And it's scraps, my dream cake. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm arguing with this guy, two adults, arguing over this dream cake. He says, it's my birthday cake. He says, it's my mother's dream cake. So finally, we had to get the commander in to resolve this issue. Because I was not going to let him eat this cake. And so they called down on the ground. They said, oh, no. Yeah, the the crewman's name was Dave. He said, no, Dave, you've got to go find the, your cake in another locker. So he pulled over another <laughs> locker. And it was, guess what? An inflatable birthday cake. <laughs> <laughs> yes. OK. Well, what was the feeling uh, being there? I can't even imagine it. Can you even describe it? It's a, there's there are a couple of ways of trying to describe it. Of course, the reality of the moment, when it's very hard to try to pass that on. But the physical feeling is closest to hanging upside down and feeling the blood rush to your head and being on top of a roller coaster all at the same time or a big speed bump where you're going up the top and feel your stomach lift up, but it stays up there <laughs> for the whole time. And it's very disorienting. The, the, the idea for all of us down here is that we're very, we're very spatially orient, oriented. That means that all the surfaces that are vertical and uh, horizontal, the, the floor that we stand on, the ceiling we look up at, the poles, the walls, everything, is in pretty well one, one direction, mm -hmm. uh, horizontal or vertical. And it's still, it's stationary. But in spaceflight, yeah, it's stationary, but we're not. 
So everything is floating around. We're moving all around and it's, it's basically being a solution of air. We're in a solution of air just as much as a screwdriver would be or a book or anything else. We're all floating around. It's just like we're like a piece of dust. And so that's what the disorienting part is. Seeing things obliquely, having to learn to read upside down and not being, not being put off when, when you, you can't quite get it right in your head about which way up is. So it's, uh, it, it really is quite a challenge to the human nervous system. And as a neurologist, I found it fascinating. What was it like to come back down to earth? Ah, the return. It's, yes. uh, it's really hard. You know, I, it takes about a day down for every day up. That's sort of my little medical rule. Okay. Uh, one thing that I did find coming back is that we, we have weighed nothing for so long that even the smallest thing feels extraordinarily heavy. So, for example, a business card. If you put a business card in the back of the hand of most astronauts when they come back, the hand actually would drop a bit under the weight. Oh, really? So, yes, and, and, and so to do any exercise is really hard on the heart because, well, there are many reasons for it, and it would be a whole lecture on space medicine if I started, but suffice it to say that if we've weighed nothing and now we have to put on a 100-pound flight suit and weigh our 130 or 150 or whatever our normal body weight is, that's now 250 pounds. We've weighed nothing. It's like going up a staircase with two bowling balls, two 10 pound bowling balls running up the stairs uh, after having the flu and been in bed for two months. I mean, oh that's the goodness. kind of feeling that we have. We're terribly deconditioned with respect to Earth's gravity and we have to get that back. You know, there's the movie Apollo 13 mm -hmm. and there was a line in that movie that really stands out to me and it's, failure is not an option. Have you been in a situation where you, we all go through difficult times in our life. Mm. Have you ever been in a situation where you sat on a chair and you didn't know what to do and you thought failure is not an option for me? I had fire was honest, I'd have to say yes, many situations. Photography is one of them, it's a very challenging thing. Uh, hopefully not during surgery because one doesn't yeah. <laughs> do that. Uh, one has to have that skill set. Uh, but doing, doing photography for the National Parks project that I, that I designed, that, it was a very hard thing because there were times I'd go in and the weather would be bad or the helicopter wouldn't fly out or I'd be there with, for three days in some place with two other men in, a, in some building with a, with a dog sled outside and, it, and, and those were hard times. So it's it thinking, well, this is like being disoriented in space. This is like, how do I now get around this problem? I personally feel that it's, it's a good idea to have options. And so that's what I've trained myself in my life. That's what Oh, it's my pleasure. It's always fun to share. Thank you. Thank you.